You are all weirdos. Mute science is the revolution. Mute science is the revolution. Hello, all you weirdos. Jim here, and I'm going to do something I haven't done before. This is a initial reaction pre-review of Ultimate X-Men. It'll be non-spoilerific. And it's more me wanting to talk about whether or not I think people will like this book. It's so weird. It's such an odd thing. It's it's more odd than probably anything I've read. And I'm not saying just the book. I'm saying me thinking to myself, are people going to like this? Because I think that there'll be people out there that will love it. And I think there'll be people who will say it's the worst thing that they've ever laid eyes on and read. I mean, it's that crazy in my mind. I'm kind of in the middle, and I'm not going to give you a score. In fact, I'm going to go review it right after I'm done this. I haven't even reviewed it. I've read it a couple times and just wanted to get my thoughts in. And it's one of those where I did like it. I'll tell you that. But I didn't love it. And usually with books, I always want to go in and love them. And I'll tell you, too, I've pushed this book a bit on the channel here. But in the way of, I said, please give it a try before you hate on it. You know, don't just say you hate it or don't just say you love it without reading it. Wait till you read it and then you'll know. And then everybody's opinion is their own opinion. Everybody's opinion is as legit as anybody, including me or anybody else you see on YouTube or listen on a podcast. Just because you end up talking into a microphone doesn't mean you're any more important than anybody else. I'm a dummy. I just like talking about comics. So there you go. And so if you don't like it, that's fine. If you do like it, but at least give it a shot. Now, with that, I think that there's some weird things in my mind that I'll tell you here. I think that if you already thought you might not like it because of how the art looks or, oh, my God, I don't think this is going to feel big. Like, I don't think there's anything in this issue that's going to convince somebody who thought they were going to hate it to like it. Uh, Again, I think it's good, but it's it's really niche. And what I can say is as a non spoilerific review of it. And very quick, here here it is. I like it as a story. I like it as something that reminds me of a supernatural horror manga. But I don't like it as an X-Men book. In fact, by the end, it doesn't feel like an X-Men book. And if somebody just was given this, you know, take all the cover and that stuff off and given it, I think a lot of people would say, oh, this reminds me of a supernatural horror manga. And then if you said, well, what do you think about it as an X-Men book? Their reaction would be, X-Men book? Like, this wasn't an X-Men book. And I think that's going to, it's it's going to end up being, I think, the most, you know, drawing the line in the sand thing. That if you're willing to let this percolate, let it cook a bit, because I think that we are getting to something. It's just something different, but it's also something a little more subtle. I think that it might end up being something cool. I'll tell you, I end up, because you have a Seiko armor in this, by the end, while well, I already liked a Seiko you know, the character armor. I, I think in this, I'm like, okay, I'm kind of getting the idea of her and I'm really enjoying her, even though the things that happen in this book are very dark, very sad, but I'm kind of like, okay, I'm in. I'm in for the journey with her, much like I end up being after the first chapter of a manga. And if you're not a manga fan, or even if you are, my reason I like manga, usually after one chapter, you know you kind of like what you're reading or not, and you could kind of give it up or keep going. But you also, when it's done right, you get a lot of character work. You get more character work in that first couple chapters than actual story work a lot of times, because in my mind, I think they have that right. If you make people fall in love with the character, they'll stick with that character through the ups and downs. There's always going to be downs. There's always going to be a couple issues or chapters where, oh, that wasn't so great, but you still love the character. You're still there. If you just fall in love with the story or the concept and then things start going wrong, you're like, well, this wasn't that good. I already got what I meant, and you leave. So I think that's a good concept, and I do feel that way about how Peach Momoko is doing Haseko. Uh, But it doesn't feel like an X-Men book. It doesn't have any real wow moments. It is a little darker. I just think it's going to be very easy for people who didn't think they'd like it to say, like, no, I'm not in. And that might be a misplay for Marvel. You, you really, in my mind, after reading it too, I thought, okay, well, these are nice. It's a nice little thing, a start with armor. But maybe the play could have been you get a 
big, you know, regular Ultimate X-Men deal going. However, you can do that because remember, this is the maker. Things are different. But have Peach Moloko do these little character studies on the side like this. And, and maybe people could have gotten more involved with that. But even when you look at it, it it's not any big surprise. People already see it. It's It's basically like, you know, Sesame Street. Which one doesn't belong here? I mean, it's obvious this book, Ultimate X-Men, is the odd book out. But there's so many other little things that make it even more so. Uh, you end up uh, like Ultimate Spider-Man. Wow moments. Oh, my God, Mary Jane. Oh, my God, the kids. Oh, my God, Uncle Ben. Like even even Little Fem, that's huge. But also that book felt big. It felt like you were like jumping into this ultimate universe to read that book. Even with Black Panther being, you know, kind of sequestered in and walled off and what kind of it still felt big, though. And then you get to see Storm in a different kind of play and Killmonger, all that stuff, which does seem like eventually it'll tie in to some stuff in this. But when you get to this Ultimate X-Men book, it's so, it's so like solitary. It's so focused just on this little girl going to school and some bad things that are happening leading to what looks like supernatural, crazy ghost type things. There it is. And and another thing aside, I mean, so you don't get that big feel. It feels like a smaller book. And maybe, you know, maybe if we had six ultimate books already out and then this. But when you say X-Men, it's got to be big. It doesn't feel big. So I'm worried. Um, But also what you do get and some of the cool things, it does look like we'll see how the mutant gene kind of activates a bit, but even that is a little sketchy at first. It it seems to involve supernatural, maybe Japanese folklore type of things, and I think some people will be thrown off. And, And I will tell you, at a point, me and Matt, who do a lot of our Marvel stuff, we did sit down to review this book, and the recording got all screwed up. So we started doing it, and then I'm going to do it with my man, Jason. Like I said, I'm going to do it right after we're done here. And Jason's a guy who does our our X-Men stuff on the uh, regular feed, the podcast feed. He does our uh, Weird Dose of X show, but he's also a big manga and anime fan. So we're going to kind of go at different angles. But when I did try to record with my man, Matt, some of the things threw him off because he, he isn't a huge manga guy. But also he doesn't, he's not really into Japanese culture, things like that. And that's where it really made me think like, you know, Matt likes a lot of things. I mean, people get mad at him because he likes Spider Boy so much. Like he is open minded. He likes what he likes. But there were things in this first issue that even threw him off that I didn't think they would throw people off because I'm so used to him being a manga fan. And and again. I know people will still argue with me that it's not manga, but it's very close to manga. And after this first issue really does feel like it. But maybe in the deal and just as a an ending to this. So my basic thoughts of this are like, I don't know what people are going to think. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm interested, though, to see the reaction. And it's always one of those things, though. Maybe for some people, this will open their eyes up to you know a different deal. Maybe even go to some manga. And if it is one of those things, if you're listening, and you're like, well, I, I don't know. I'm not a huge X Men fan, and I don't really read manga, but I'll give it a shot. And, and you end up liking it. Not, and I'm not saying you like it because you say, oh my god, that's just like this, this, or that. Like something hits, and you're like, I kind of dig this. Like, eh. Just get a hold of me. You you could in this, you know, the comments here or anywhere. If you comment, I'll see it. If you want to know, like, hey, Jim, are there other mangas, like actual mangas I want to try that are kind of like this? Or what do you suggest? Because I'm always open to talk any sort of comics. And that means manga and everything else as well. But again, it it is. I think that the idea that it's an X-Men book is what's going to be the, the death of it for a lot of people. I think that that might be the thing, because even some people who say, oh, I can't stand that art, whatever. Oh, it's too different. A lot of times they'll tell me like they love indie stuff because it's so different. It's just you end up having a lot of things that people expect from an X-Men book, whether it's Ultimate Universe or not. This doesn't have it, but it does have some interesting things that are different, but they might be way too different again. I said earlier that I wasn't going to tell you my score because I don't I don't know what my score is now. 
it kind of jumps all over the place. It's a very personal thing. Any book that's so wacky like this is always going to have a more personal score because it does depend on what you were expecting, what you're bringing into it. But telling you, I'm, I'm going to have to see, and I'm going to be recording in about five minutes with Jason. And I'm going to have to see, like, maybe our discussion could end up bringing me up or down. Uh, we'll see. But, yeah, the, the regular review will be up uh, tomorrow morning, Wednesday morning, as a lot of the, the big books. I try to get at least that one big book review out at that point and then continuing on. This week, I'm already working on a bunch of my DC stuff and some other things. Trying to figure out, I'm still trying to figure out the game here on the used tubes. I have done you know, podcast for 10 years almost now. The YouTube's a little bit different game. And uh, yeah, yeah. And and just to, if you haven't listened to our podcast, a lot of the stuff that I put on here is from the podcast, but uh, we have a Marvel DC. I have all those manga stuff. You can check the description of the video and it has all that. Both the Marvel and the DC podcast are hitting around the 526th episode. So just as our main show, that's a lot. And just to, you know, make people laugh. At one point for like a year and a half, our DC Comics podcast was over 12 hours uh, a show each week, about 12 hours long. I mean, we, we kind of dug a little too deep. That's, we reviewed every book and there were a lot of books coming out at that point. And to tell you, if you want to get involved in the podcast and you do go over, it, rest assured that there's no downtime. We have the, the that, show is we just did 526 episode 526 and that was our 526 week in a row we've never missed a week so we've been doing it for that long we kind of like doing it i hope that we know what we're doing but we like to have fun i still mess up all over the place like you see on this youtube stuff but i'm trying to like i said learn the lay of the land and if you have any suggestions things like that or what you want to see covered or talked about let me know in the comments but really again if you want to comment about what you're thinking, like, yeah, I'm kind of digging what I saw so far with this, but I'm wary and stuff like that. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything, even in the comments, but I hope that most people check it out and then have their own opinion. And then let me know what that opinion is when we put the review up tomorrow. But I'm rambling on tomorrow. This is what happens when you don't have notes and just decide to do something right before recording something else. It's not the oftentimes the greatest thing, but yeah, I like I like the off the cuff stuff. I like it off the cuff, Jimmy. They'll start calling me down at the rec center, but that is it. Thanks everybody. Let me know what you think, and I will talk to you all later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.